Perth Linux Users Group, talking Linux and open source. We thank Zane. Zane's been amazing getting this together. Without Zane, I don't, I don't think it's we're in a very that it probably wouldn't have happened. So um, big thanks to, to Zane. We've already gone through all these uh, national prize and data sponsors, which Pete has already talked about. Um, and so I'll just skip on over to our local sponsors. Sponsors are obviously integral to getting this thing up and going. Without them, you wouldn't have the thousands, it seems like thousands of prizes that uh, are up for grabs. Special thanks to ECU, Community Cloud, Department of Agriculture and Food, Space Cubed, great place. Lots of things happening here. It's the hub of, well, everything at the moment. So uh, get involved with Space Cubed. Partner and Prosper, uh, Jan's been excellent with getting this uh, event organised, just been fantastic. Use her for all your events. City of Perth continue to amaze me. They go well and truly above and beyond just the uh, Mayor's Twitter account. They're pretty, uh, pretty proactive with these sorts of things. Plug, who are uh, streaming the video um, content and all those sorts of things throughout uh, the weekend. Well, as long as they're around, <laughs> I'm sure. And finally, Landgate, who've been uh, particularly proactive with giving us data and, and all sorts of things, sponsoring uh, a few prizes which we'll touch on soon. Landgate's been uh, particularly good with it all. So uh, competition packs, who here hasn't seen the competition pack? You guys are amazing or just a bit shy. Competition packs were emailed out. Um, it's got all the T's and C's and bits and bobs that you guys need to know as to where to uh, put your code and what not to do and what to do and, and all those sorts of things. So if you haven't read it, check it out and make sure you're following the rules and regulations and all those sorts of things. So. Uh, been social this weekend because you're all those sorts of lovely people. Uh, use the hashtag GovHack, and I think um, Tim was trying to get GovHack Perth going as well. So if you want to keep it local, keep it low key, GovHack Perth, if you want to spread the love. More broadly than that, go to uh, hashtag GovHack and uh, keep the conversation going. There's also a Facebook group as well, which uh, there was a fair bit of conversation on that as well. So. Um, get social, and I know you're all just uh, meeting for the first time, some of you, some of you I've seen plenty of, um, but uh, spread, spread the love. So, what you need to know about Space Cube, I had to but uh, toilets, don't use those toilets, use those toilets out there, they're bigger, better, brighter, and they've got a passcode which has been stapled to the doors. And usually it falls off at some stage and people have a rough time. So come find Brody or Tim or one of the organisers and we'll try and scramble something together so it's not too embarrassing for you. Exits, I had this written down. Exits, it's the way that you came in, that's about it. That's the only way. If there's an emergency, go out the same way. Otherwise, we're in a lot of trouble. Sort of out. But we won't talk too much about that. Don't go into the vault. There's no exit out of it. Uh, toilets, we've already touched on. Food, you will get fed throughout the course of the weekend. Don't stress. I stress a lot about getting fed at these things. Don't. We've got uh, far too much food coming um, later this evening. Breakfast, lunch, dinner each day is all being handled. So uh, don't stress out about it. If there's some dietary requirements or what have you, we've already asked. But if you didn't put it down, come see us. We'll sort that out. Um, but you're going to get fed, you're going to get watered. Um, I'll touch on this one because these things can uh, be mentally draining. So please, if you're starting to think about things that were not otherwise in your head, if, uh, if you're starting to feel a little bit tired, if you're uh, seeing things that you probably shouldn't be seeing, well then go for a walk, work somewhere else. There's a lovely park just down the road. Go for a walk around it, there's a foyer out there, there's some couches, there's lots of little nooks and crannies to get lost in and space cubed. But mental health over the course of the, the weekend is an important one. And if you go home and have a sleep, you will do more work in the morning because you're going to be fresher and brighter and uh, the cogs are going to be spinning a little bit better. So please look after yourself throughout the course of the weekend. So now we'll get on to our special people and uh, the chiefs around the place. So first of all, I'd like to uh, call up the Chief of Space Cubed, 
I, I couldn't find your title. Good. That's Space King Chief. <laughs> uh, Brody, we'll just touch on Yay. how we're here. Yeah. 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 I might just talk a little bit about Space Cube. So who's been to Space Cube before? Okay, cool. So that half of the image is good. Um, so Space Cube's a 500, as you see, a 550 square meter co-working collaboration innovation space. And we've tried to make it a bit different where we have a third social and environmental entrepreneurs, a third technology and creative startups and creative industries, and a third bigger corporates, government and not-for-profits innovation projects co-located here. So we've got uh, organised like Landgate, one of our government uh, members. Um, Chevron's been using the space. ThoughtWorks is one of our organisational members, um, and then a lot of entrepreneurs. So Nearmap works out of here, which is a, quite a big data company, um, and then people who are just coming out with ideas. So what we offer is really co-working space, um, access to permanent desks, meeting rooms, and really the things that people need to get their ideas off the ground. Um, so that's pretty much the summary of, of Space Cube. And you'll be here the whole weekend, so if you want to ask me questions, I'm here as well with you on this long weekend. So the, um, I'll introduce uh, Lynn Beasley, uh, Chief Scientist. Uh, no? Anybody? Yeah. Oh, oh. I gave you the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'll tell you a quick story about Lynn then, because Lynn's great. Um, so uh, Lynn, I, I met Lynn about probably two and a half years ago when I was running around going, I'm going to do this thing, I'm going to build this space and there's going to be all these entrepreneurs and they're going to do awesome things there and build new industry for Western Australia, it's going to be awesome. Lynn was like, that's great, you need to go and do that, I'll introduce some people who can help you. So she started introducing me to people and took me up to Kings Park to her second, second office, office, that's right, <laughs> um, at Botanicals there and introduced me to one of the sort of bigger sort of venture guys in Perth. And um, she introduced me, I ran through, oh, I'm going to do this thing in, in the city, it's going to be this big space with lots of entrepreneurs. And then he listened and quickly said, that's the worst idea ever. You shouldn't do that, you're going to lose all your money. No, it first 10 years away from doing that. Um, and I was like, okay, I took it on board. He, he then explained why and the reasons why, which was good. Lynn called me and said, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, but we, I still went on with it. And, you know, Space has got 260 members now. Um, vast range of different people and really was built to facilitate these sort of things where probably I had a lot of people say you're hosting GovHack that's interesting why would developers want to go and help the government make sense of their data and really what I think comes back to is um, over the weekend think about it as building new applications for people not so much the government so using government data to build new things that make data more accessible people are able to use um, use that information um, that there's lots of interesting things you can do with government data which will make people's lives better. So I think that's the way to really frame this um, and, and find the really interesting things you can build with it. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Remind me, two silver sponsors that we didn't mention was the uh, Department of Commerce, who's been excellent, and also ThoughtWorks, who seem to pop up at all of these events. Fantastic group um, and good sponsors of all these sorts of events. So. Get behind them if you're looking at a bit of data to come and come us and look into uh, ThoughtWorks as well. I'll introduce the uh, the chief of uh, GovHack WA, Nick. He's been the main driver behind uh, getting this all together and getting uh, all the people together. So I'll uh, introduce Nick, please. Thanks, guys. Um, first, I just want to say a big, huge thank you to everyone who's here tonight. Uh, and going to be here over the weekend. Um, you've heard already that this has been a bit of a sprint, seven weeks to put it together. Um, all of our sponsors have come on board and uh, we are hugely grateful for them. Uh, they've come on board with, in, while GovHack's reasonably established over East, it's a new concept here. And it's been highly significant all the sponsors that have come on board because it's been a short period of time, very little information. Um, in one sense, and so that's been absolutely awesome. So I think another big round of applause for the sponsors. I also wanted to say that tonight is basically the start of a conversation. Um, uh, effectively, there's, uh, for those of you who may have attended GovHack or heard the kind of uh, Web 2.0, oh, sorry, Gov 2.0 conversations over East, there's a, a, a whole movement to kind of encourage government to open their data to be more citizen-centric. That's what this weekend is about. 
if we can actually, uh, the outcomes of this weekend will then be used for continuing dialogue with government. And I love what Brody said a second ago, you know, it's not about us doing stuff for all gov government. This is a collaborative process which allows us all to get involved and ultimately benefits the citizens, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks once again for coming. Uh, I hope you have an awesome weekend. Uh, and thank you for the guests who've come tonight. And uh, I'm now gonna pass over to Lynn to do the official launch. And thanks so much, Lynn. Much. Let me first acknowledge we're meeting on Noongar land, pay my respects to their elders, past, present and those to come because we want to honour a better Australia for every single Australian. Thank you for inviting me here tonight. As Chief Scientist of Western Australia, I firmly believe that one of the most important things is citizen science, getting everybody working so we make the most of all our opportunities. And one thing I was asked to do by government a couple of years ago was to sort of set up a better network to look at the dolphins in our beloved Swan River just down the way there. And we realized that we just didn't have enough scientists to do that. But if we trained people who were interested, then we could get an absolutely brilliant record of what was happening. We now have over 500 people in Dolphin Watch. We're hoping to extend it to the other estuaries and we're gonna have Junior Dolphin Watch to involve younger people in schools and the like. We now know where those animals are. They're through the whole river system the whole year. We didn't know that before. But we know in particular, for example, that the mothers with young calves are in the uh, uh, lower reaches of the Canning River. Now just think how much data that's generating and how useful that can be and how we can put it together with all sorts of other information. And another world first that I think that Dolphin Watch is certainly the very first and best example of looking at cetaceans in rivers around the world. But another thing that we really scored heavily on was in ecotourism terms, the fact that we started watching whale sharks. And now 45 countries take observations of whale sharks when you see one, you photograph it from the side, the pattern of dots is unique in every single one, you send it into a database, and I actually photographed one last year swimming up at Ningaloo, and he's just reappeared yesterday, so I'm really happy because I was getting worried he might not come back and go back to less than one. But just think of the volume of data that we're creating for that. And it can help us set up uh, reserves, make sure that we do the right thing by the animals and by the environment. They're just two examples of what we've been doing in Western Australia. And even more recently, two weeks ago, I launched an app from the Department of Fisheries because we're really worried about getting into our river systems things we don't need, thank you. And one of the examples recently was the Asian paddle crab. When somebody was busy fishing down uh, in the Fremantle um, area, and up came something that didn't look like something you'd like to put in your spaghetti for dinner and realized it shouldn't be there. Alerted Department of Fisheries by an app that they produce which gives you the GPS setting, lets you photograph what you've seen and send it in. They dash down there, put out baits and we hope we've caught them. But other things like the green-lipped mussel. We want those only in supermarkets, please, not in our river systems. Cichlid fish have gone out. We want people to identify those and clear them out. And an example a few years ago, and I won't say which it was, of the hostelries along the Swan River, but was seen after a particular wedding event where people, instead of flowers on the table, had goldfishes in bowls and they were busy tipping them into the Swan River which we don't need there. But if we can have things like apps that allow us to send information in really quickly and check it, how great that will be. It's just one of the aspects where we can do using enormous opportunities we have here in Western Australia. If we have one of the 20 biggest supercomputers in the, in the, on the planet being set up because of radio astronomy. The biggest science project we've ever conceived to do on the planet is the Square Kilometre Array of Radio Telescopes. It's going to be based here in Western Australia in the Murchison, about three and a half hours drive northeast of Perth, and in the um, deserts of South Africa. That's going to generate an enormous amount of data. 
because of that telescope, we now have the Pawsey Center, as I say, one of the 20 biggest supercomputers in the world. 25% is going to be for radio astronomy, but the other 75% for health data records, environmental data, uh, agricultural data, you name it. But having the data there is obviously brilliant, but it's the first step. And that's where you come in, making sense of that. Making sense also, for example, of our precious soil systems. And you might know that the Western Australian government funds a wonderful program called Premier's Fellows. These are 13 people we've attracted from around the world or back <coughs> to Western Australia in several cases who really lead research programs in science but applied to the community. So if we can build that up, that's going to be great. One of them is a world expert on microbes in soil. And because our soils are so depleted, because they've been around for so long, if we want great mine site rehabilitation, and I spent the morning down at Alcoa looking at their world leading program down there, or we want better agriculture, we have to understand the bugs in our soil. Andy Whiteley has just joined us from Britain. Would you believe it? He did a map of the distribution of microbes right across Great Britain. He's going to be doing a similar process for Western Australia. He's getting a program called Micro Blitz going, where school students will collect the samples and help do the analysis. But just think of all the extra data that next year you will have available that you can be using to really help make Western Australia a better place. And you mentioned ECU earlier. We were out looking at their cyber security system out there. You have to go through walls this thick, even thicker, I think, than the vault you have around there, Brody. But we were working with the federal government, looking at the key aspects of keeping Australia secure. And of course, there have been issues on the news this week about exactly that. So Western Australia, we're doing an amazing job. We're doing an amazing job in other aspects of innovation too. I think this process is very innovative. It's great Department of Commerce is on board. Two of the other projects that I'm going to mention that Department of Commerce have been involved with was turbocharge your business. Some of you will get a business out of what's happening this weekend. When that happens, go and talk to the Department of Commerce. That's right, Jim Wyatt and Tamarin. Yes, Barker, because they will help you make sure you can use the supercomputer in Perth to even make it go faster than it did before. Wonderful opportunity. But the other thing is innovator of the year. And Two things both relevant to what you're doing here. One of the winners is called Canopy, which is a great program running out of Subiaco to say if we're going to train people better in schools, in universities, in TAPES, we want to access all the information out there on the web. Particularly, we want to get down those videos that will enrich the teaching programs. They're now doing that, working with virtually all the universities across Australia, and now they've actually branched out there in San Francisco a couple of weeks ago, setting up an office there. Really fantastic. And a winner last year, and just such important work, is Steve Wilton and Sue Fletcher. They're professors. They were at UWA. They just moved to Murdoch Uni, an interesting move. And what they've done is to work on these ghastly genetic diseases for which we have had no real clue how to try and overcome. Things like muscular dystrophy, cystic fibrosis, Huntington's, you can name even more. And what these amazing scientists have done is to work out that you can't get at the DNA locked in a nucleus, but you can look at the message for say just one page, so to speak, of that DNA, the RNA that goes out to the factory floor in the uh, cytoplasm of the cell and makes the protein. In something like uh, muscular dystrophy, what's happened is that the protein that makes like shock absorbers that sit at the edge of muscle cells and take the strain as we move are destroyed. And therefore, it's a bit like a car without its um, shock absorbers. Very soon, it starts falling apart. What they've worked out is that you can't radically change the DNA. That's inaccessible to us. 
but you can play with that message. You can make it a little bit shorter, but you can still make it read in the correct sequence. So you get a shock absorber, but a slightly shorter one, but one that still works. And trials that they've been doing with boys, it's particularly a disease of boys, at a stage when they were starting to go downhill, so they wouldn't be able to walk for six minutes, and then gradually they can't walk for one, and then they're in a wheelchair. These boys have been stabilized and even started to get better in the year of the trial. Now they have huge investment from Sarepta, a company in the US, to do more research. So there's a lot of amazing innovation happening. A great deal of computer science went into looking at the DNA of these individuals. It's the biggest, in the case of muscular dystrophy, the biggest gene in the human genome because it's making this dystrophin, this enormously large protein. Just think how much computer time has gone into that. And just think also of all the records that have been put into that database from families with uh, muscular dystrophy to work out the genetics, to see the families at risk, to offer them some help and support as they plan their families. So these are just some examples of where we have enormous databases, but accessing them, using them, making sense of them. That's where you come in this weekend. There's where you will make an enormous difference. Will somebody please come up with an app so you can tell me where there are some parking spaces in Central Park? <laughs> I would really love that. And I hope someone is gonna access the databases from the museum. I was a trustee for seven years. I love the museum. If you haven't been to see the latest exhibition, Secrets of the Afterlife, it's fantastic. Please go. Has anybody been yet? Uh, after this, it's take, take a couple of hours when you need to clear your mind and just whip across to the museum and have a look. Come back inspired with new things. But if you go into their databases, you know, we've discovered 1,500 species of flowering plants unknown to science two years ago that are now being put into these bases through Kings Park and a whole load of animal species we didn't have before to build on the enormous biodiversity we have here. Only one part of Australia reaches the international criterion of one of 30 locations around the world that has extreme biodiversity that we must protect. The southwest of WA is the only Australian example. So if you go into the museum archives, you're going to find a whole load of data that we can start making more sense of where the animals are, how we can protect them, spread of things like diseases that went through the frog population, but now hopefully is stabilized. And I'd in particular ask you to look out for one species. It's called Manihinii, and the reason I'm really interested in it is that it lives in a trench off rock, rock nest. It's about 130 meters down this trench. And it's bright red, and we have no idea why it is, because down there there would be no light, of course. Light would penetrate that deep. But the reason I'm interested in is that its full name is Manihinii Lindesleyi, because <laughs> it was named after me, so please watch out for my sponge. <laughs> I'm just wishing you the very best of luck this weekend. May your thought processes be absolutely brilliant. I'm almost convinced already the winner nationally is going to be here because we have such an innovative community. But I thought finally, because this is space cubed, and again I want to acknowledge Brody, you have done an amazing job, where are you Brody, in setting all this up. And even though it was a rotten introduction, I did do some decent ones after that to make up, yes? <laughs> and I did bring in some magazines to read, but you've done an absolutely wonderful job, and it's great that this is the totally appropriate place to do it. But I thought I would challenge, you know the Vogons, for those of you who've read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, who wrote the worst poetry in the universe, well, I'm going to try and give them a run for their money, which is, don't hold back, stay right on track, have a crack, and go golf pack. <laughs>
Then on Twitter. Chief Psy underscore WA. Just like up on the screen. There you go. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much, Lee. So we'll just uh, move on to prizes. So um, Pia's already spoken about, I had to, but uh, Pia's already spoken about all the national prizes, which was a very long list, but we were also lucky enough to have some national prizes. You've already gone over these. Local prizes. So um, we'll just go over all the prizes that have been done locally. A lot of these local prizes have mentors in and around Space Cube for the duration of the weekend. Take advantage of them. Take advantage of the local prizes and uh, win yourself some money. Best use of public transport data awarded by PTAWA. There's more information about all these sorts of things on the sites and various other places. Plus you can talk to the very people over the weekend. Best use of public transport data awarded by Public Transport Association WA. There's $1,000 for the digital humanities, the best outcome using historical records. Thanks to GovHack. The best mapping application awarded by Landgate, $1,000. The winning project will be an application that incorporates a mapping component in the most outstanding, innovative, or surprising fashion. Uh, $1,000, whoa, 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 sorry. Um, Another $1,000 from Landgate for utilising their new Slip2 platform, uh, which utilises Google Maps engine services. Check out the Landgate stuff. They've been excellent supporters uh, for this weekend. And finally, Space Cube, three months, unlimited access to Brody McCulloch. <laughs> I don't know which is worth more. But uh, for the most entrepreneurial... Is that a spell one? Most entrepreneurial outcomes, so uh, those that are thinking a little bit further outside the square than the rest. I think that's how it's interpreted. Mm -hmm. Up to Brody. Uh, so this is the schedule, and it will be posted around the building, so uh, you'll know what's going on. Obviously, you are there somewhere. Uh, we'll be soon breaking out and forming the teams. Obviously, about 50% of you already have teams, and we'll be going through and kind of form teams for the rest of you. Uh, it will sh be shutting up at midnight tonight, so uh, go home, hopefully you sleep rather than keep working. Or you can keep working, up to you. Uh, tomorrow morning, bright and early, 8 o'clock, uh, mentors start trickling in at about 9, so I've been told, I just, yeah, I don't know about that, but anyway, they've said they'll come in at 9, my money's on 10 thereafter. Uh, 11.30, <laughs> you need to update your projects and registrations of the team on govhack.org, you've got to lock them in. So if you're going to jump teams, make sure you do it before 11.30 and lock that in. Once you're locked in, you're locked in. So uh, make sure you're a nice, around nice people. Followed by lunch, we've got a presentation on um, about open data platform using the SLIP2, presented by Landgate. Pretty confident that's the right time still. Uh, it's one. It's now one. Don't worry, you'll be so in depth that Time will just fly by. We'll tell you when it's gone. Um, and that's followed by uh, dinner at 6.30. We have a mid-weekend check-in at 7.30. That's basically a 60-second shout-out as to where you're at, what you're doing, where you're struggling, who you need, all those sorts of things. Um, and then we're shutting up at 12 o'clock. Moving over to Sunday, uh, 8 o'clock start again. Um, we have various people from different government departments coming in and having a few workshops. Um, and then that's culminated in the start of the uh, submissions through to the national gov hack. Uh, we get to listen to the simulcast from Canberra at four o'clock on Sunday. Uh, and then we go through our local uh, judging and awards and you guys will be pitching what you built and why you built it and why it's better than everyone else's and all those sorts of things. Um, and then there's prizes, glory, food and beer and everyone's happy and you can go home and have a good sleep. So that's the, the course of the weekend. Mentors, I hope that most of you are here right now. Uh, we've got Meg Travers from the, do you guys want to stand up or come out the front? Yeah. <laughs> come out the front, introduce yourself so people know what you look like and all those sorts of things. We've got Meg Travers, come out the front. Yeah. Come on, out the front. <laughs> hey, Nick Moss from Lego, from the State Records Office. Damien Shepherd from Wallace, Dr. Annette Tyler from the Australian Bureau of Statistics, and Daniel from the Australian Bureau of Statistics. 
So if you're wondering how to use their data um, or get a business idea as to what they're after or why they wouldn't do the things that you're doing or what have you, <laughs> well then see these people and uh, they'll help you out. Um, Kevin Rad's cat sounds like a good Twitter handle. Hit him up. Uh, thanks to these guys. They'll be in and out throughout the course of the weekend um, to give you guys a hand and general business case bits and pieces. There's a couple Thank of you. folks from planning and treasury on the phone who give you assistance with budget data or planning stuff as well. So. Really? Yeah. Over the weekend? A general offer or is that just for the weekend? Well, just yeah, for whatever. I've got better numbers. <laughs> <laughs> People in the Department of Finance don't go home on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> So. Impressive. So uh, thank you very much for the mentors for uh, coming along. <laughs> thank you. Um, you can keep standing here if you like. Or you <laughs> um, judges, so this will be the judging on Sunday afternoon. We've got Mike uh, Bradford, CEO of Landgate, here. Hello. Come on. Uh, come. Oh, come on, don't be shy. We've got Jim White who is the general manager of the digital economy. He's also running the workshop. Up the front, Jim. I know you're not shy. Uh, Stuart Medley, uh, senior lecturer at ECU. See you in the house. And we've got James Bromberger, who's driven all the way up from Margaret River. This afternoon to be here tonight. So, uh, These guys will be judging it on various criteria, which you guys should already have. But um, obviously, there's the architect side, the business side, the the government side, and, and obviously all those sorts of bits and pieces. So um, they'll be back on Sunday, I believe, yes. to, uh, to judge and hand out some awards and make you feel warm and fuzzy, perhaps, if you're so lucky. <laughs> Work hard enough. So thank you guys for our uh, So now we, um, we're going to, uh, uh, well, as as our good friend Zane Cricket says, we're going to pony up. We're going to uh, get into groups and we're going to form groups and, and all those sorts of things. I know a lot of you are part of Startup Weekend. This is slightly different to Startup Weekend. It's not about the uh, business case side of it, or it is to some degree. But there's not the pitching up front. But there is a degree of pitching. There's uh, a huge amount of butcher paper and textures or crayons or things to mark the paper with. I know about 50% of you already have groups, the other 50% don't yet have groups, but you probably all have ideas, I hope. So if you go into your groups, whether they're formed or not formed, put down your idea on the uh, piece of paper. If you're looking for people to join you, write down the skills that you're after and start meeting and greeting people and forming some teams around those ideas. So uh, does that all make sense to everyone? Yep. And then you can come back and eat because I feel like you need to. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I just think with my stuff. Anyway, I do. If you want to go out there now and uh, write down your idea, get your group together, hover for a little bit, uh, we'll get everyone into groups, and then we'll come back here and food will have appeared. I've been told, I've been promised. Rim promised. <laughs> so if you guys want to get up and move. Um, so if, if the group isn't what you want or expect or you're working on the problem that you didn't actually think that you're working on, you've got until 11 o'clock.